In this video, we will look at how to interact with OpenAI models via a Python library called LangChain. LangChain is a tool that makes interacting with OpenAI models a bit easier. Here are some of the modules that LangChain provides. Most relevant to us for the time being is this prompt module. The code we will throw together demonstrates a technique often referred to as prompt engineering, which as you will see is not complicated at all and is actually more of an art. The specific feature that the code we will write will be related to is this interactive world map that plots information related to arbitrary queries. You can literally ask anything and the model we will be using will do a darn good job of plotting relevant locations to your query on the map. For example, what are the hottest cities in Africa? Or where is the best seafood in Brazil? Expedia and or Travelocity, please contact me if you want something like this integrated into your applications. This video is important because it demystifies a good portion of the AI apps being released during this 2023 artificial intelligence craze we are in the middle of as simple applications of prompt engineering techniques. First, I should say, you will need to create an account with OpenAI and get an API key for authenticating your model requests. The API key is how OpenAI tracks how everyone is using their models and is also what allows them to limit each person's usage. There are ways of running models on your own computers instead of paying a monthly fee to access models over the internet, but we will leave that topic for another video. So this will be our starting point. You can see this is a Flask server with one endpoint that's not doing much to begin with. In the project folder, not much to look at, but you can see that I'm using Poetry for doing the package management. And you can also see this .env file. This is where I am storing the OpenAI API key. The purpose of this video is just to give you the broad strokes of how this goes, and you can apply it to your own application however you like. So in this terminal, I will run the Flask server, and in this terminal, I will issue curl request to the endpoint as we develop it, right? You can see as I send curl requests, you'll see the logs on the left panel, right? You can see we are importing some LangChain modules at the top now, and in the controller for our Flask endpoint, we are instantiating an LLM, a large language model. This object allows us to tweak or configure the large language model. For example, we can pass in a temperature parameter that can be minimum zero, maximum one. The closer to zero means the less random the responses will be, meaning that if we send a request back to back, we should get the same exact response. If we have a temperature closer towards one, that means the responses will be more random. Here is where we can choose which model we want to use. GPT 3.5 Turbo, that's the one everybody is most familiar with. And this is how we send requests via code to the model. So let's run the Flask server again, and we will send a curl request, and that should trigger a request to the model. Here is what the model responded with. As an AI language model, I can tell you that the answer is four. The next update to the code, you can see we're doing some validation on the input. We're making sure we receive an application JSON content type that has a key of prompt with the prompt that the caller of this endpoint wants to send to the LLM. So let's test this out. And I have some example curl requests over here. So let's send the first one. The first one reads, what is three plus three? So it should say something like six, right? And it does. Let's send the second one. The second curl example reads, what is the color of an orange? It should say orange, right? 
The color of an orange is orange. Perfect. Okay, for this next step, we are getting into some prompt engineering techniques. You can see that when you break it down, prompt engineering is really just string templating. You can see that we're now prepending the prompt with this text that reads, please respond as Donald Trump would to the following query. That's really all there is to it, is being creative with your string templates. That is prompt engineering. So let's test this out. And now the prompt reads, what is the color of an orange? Just like before, remember it said the color of an orange is orange. That was the previous response. But now that we've changed the template, it reads, look, nobody knows oranges better than me. Believe me, I know oranges. And let me tell you, the color of an orange is orange. Okay, for this one, we really haven't done much. All that we've done is add an additional class called the prompt template class. This is utility for being able to do string templating. All prompt engineering boils down to at the end of the day is string templating. So this class allows us to reuse a prompt over and over again. The reason why we want to do this is so that we can send more examples to the model we're using so that it has more context of how it should respond to future requests. So when you send or craft a prompt and also include some examples of how it should respond to some questions, they call that few shot prompt templating, right? All of this stuff is very simple, right? So it's a bunch of lingo. Let's test this out. We'll run the Flask server and let's send this prompt, an empty prompt, it doesn't matter. All that we're doing when we test this step is checking out what the prompt template class does for us, right? So you can see that it's gonna format this prompt twice with two example queries along with their corresponding responses, right? You can see this class is just spitting out strings. Okay, I minimized the text a little bit to fit all of the code in. But in this step, we really haven't done much. We added an additional helper class. This one is called length-based example selector. So what this will do is limit the amount of examples we're giving to our prompt so that we can not cross any thresholds that are imposed upon us by the endpoints OpenAI provides. So on the docs, you'll see that OpenAI has a limit on how many requests you can send per minute and how many tokens you can send per minute. So tokens, according to my understanding, is similar to words, right? So token count would be word count. Long story short is the length-based example selector allows you to limit how many tokens or words you're going to be including in your final prompt. Okay, now things are coming together. You can see that we've now included another class called few shot prompt template class, right? So this is what ties everything together and builds our final prompt that we will send off to the model we're using. So if we test this out, you'll see what I mean. Let's use this example curl. And you can see this is the final prompt. Answer each query. Please respond as Donald Trump would. What is the greatest country in the world? Well, America, of course. Please respond as Donald Trump would. What is the greatest country in the history of mankind? And that is the total prompt to which the LLM we're using or the model we're using will respond to. Nice. So all we're going to do for this next step is tie in this code with the Flask endpoints so that we can receive the response to our request from wherever we issue our request. So let's start the Flask server and test this out. Here is the curl and we should receive a response to our request in the same terminal where we issued the request, right? So here we have it. 
There's no question about it, folks. The greatest country in the history of mankind is the United States of America. We've got the best people, the best economy, the best military. Nobody can compete with us. Okay, that pretty much does it. So now I will tweak the prompt from being this Donald Trump AI app to being the prompt needed for the interactive world map app. Here is the prompt that I have crafted. Can you return an array of objects as a JSON formatted string that are geographically relevant to an arbitrary query? Here are the requirements. Each object in the array should contain three keys, lon, lat, and blurb. Lon is the longitude, lat is the latitude, blurb is the one to three sentence answer to the query, along with information about the environmental concerns of the city or region in which the coordinates exist. The array should be max length three items. The overall length of the answer should be maximum 500 characters. Blah, blah, blah. Let's run the Flask server and test this out. Here we are running the server. Here is the first query. What is the greatest country in the history of mankind? Let's wait for the LLM or model to respond. Okay, so it responded appropriately. Fantastic. I should say that I moved the examples over to a separate file. Right, so I'm still using the few shot prompt template technique, but maybe you already knew that. Okay, so that's the first request and it looks good. And the second request. What are the hottest cities in America? So let's see what it says. Okay, that looks good as well. It says Las Vegas, Phoenix, Arizona, and San Diego. Looks great. I should say that the LLM is not necessarily a source of truth it has been trained to spit out things and if it was trained on inaccurate or untruthful data it will spit out inaccurate or untruthful results that's all folks